Hello and welcome to Logan Rano Aquascaping. Today I've got another aquascaping deep dive for you guys. This is a series where I dive into, on sort of a scientific level, how certain things work in the planted aquarium. And today's topic is hydrogen peroxide, my all time favorite algae killer. It's awesome because it's relatively safe and it's selectively toxic, meaning it only targets the things you'll wanna kill and it's not gonna do much harm at all to the things you love, like your plants and your animals. So we're gonna dive a little bit into the science of how it works on a molecular level and I'm gonna work to keep it very basic and entry level. So we won't go too into the details, but I think it's cool to understand a little bit of how these things work. So let's get started. Okay, so you've probably heard hydrogen peroxide referred to commonly as H2O2. And it gets that nickname from its molecular structure. It is very simply two oxygens bonded together with an hydrogen on either side, hence the name H2O2. So in the case of hydrogen peroxide, that bond between the two oxygens is actually quite weak and easily broken. So when we inject hydrogen peroxide into water, that bond breaks and you get what's called a radical hydroxyl group. So those are two groups of the OH with an unbonded electron on the oxygen. And that's your radical part of the radical hydroxyl name. And what that wants to do is it really wants to bond to something else. So it's gonna see something really simple like the cell wall of a bacteria or an algae, and it's gonna do everything it can to kind of bond to it and sort of make that lone electron happy and give it a companion. And that's basically how hydrogen peroxide works. So you inject it into water, the bond between the oxygens break apart, and then it bonds to something else that's very easily broken apart. And the reason that bacteria and algae are easily broken is because they're very primitive organisms. They have very simple structures, unlike plants and animals. So what happens is that radical hydroxyl group incorporates itself into the algae or the bacteria and ultimately weakens and destroys it because it breaks up its cell wall. And as a byproduct, you will get just water and oxygen, which are completely safe. So using hydrogen peroxide in the planted aquarium doesn't leave any residual toxins, which is really important when you're dealing with plants and animals. You don't want to be adding anything that is building up toxicity in the tanks. So it will still cause a burning effect on them, which is why it's really important to follow dosing instructions and to be careful what you make contact with. But plants and animals have very thick defensive layers, kind of just like your skin. So if you were to dip your finger into hydrogen peroxide, you would feel a little bit of a tingling sensation especially if you had a cut or something. And what's happening is exactly what I described earlier with a bacteria or an algae, is that hydrogen peroxide is breaking apart and that free radical hydroxyl group is you know, bonding to your individual skin cells. But because your skin, just like plants and fish, have a very complex defensive layer, it's just gonna cause a little bit of burning, but ultimately it's not gonna destroy anything. That said, at extreme doses, you can harm your plants and your animals, especially aquatic mosses, because mosses are a lot more primitive than your higher order plants that you keep. So you wanna be careful around mosses and just do your research with the individual species. But basically you just wanna spot dose problem areas and that'll minimize damage and allow you to really target that vulnerable algae and bacteria. And you wanna make sure at the store to pick up the very diluted 3% hydrogen peroxide. This is gonna really prevent you from overdosing. And once again, I recommend spot treatment. I'm not a huge proponent of doing large doses into your tank because ultimately that can kill your beneficial bacteria. So you wanna be really careful with that and only use that technique in extreme cases. So I hope this sort of scientific aquascaping deep dive was a little bit interesting to learn about for you guys. And if you like this type of content, I've got a whole playlist dedicated to this real nerdy scientific deep dive type of content. And it's simply called aquascaping deep dive. So that'll be linked up in the card at the end of the video as well as in the description. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.